Okay. Well, would you look at this? Here's a shout out to Stu Watts, eh, Stu? Guys, guess what type of wood this is? Let's do a spit test here. You're not, ew, goobers, you're not gonna see. But this is those dark red guys. This is an old uh, coffee table. My buddy Stu Watts gave me. It was pretty big when he gave it to me. I says, I can't keep it like that. So it's just like it was. It's redwood, guys. That's the natural live edge of it right there. See? That's all natural stuff right here. If you look down here, you'll even see some like uh, pimples in there. Like um, the, I think maple burls do, do that. So, but. I feel like I want to carve this today. I'm not too sure. I really don't know what I want to carve yet. It's like, uh, I'd say, two and a half inches thick. Um, thinking about a wood spirit here. But first of all, what I got to do, because Stu gave me the piece, and why I didn't want to have anything to do with the coffee table piece, because it was cracked. But, like, you see all that? That's from when they made the table. Uh, that would be the underside of the table, so that's all epoxy, right? So this whole thing is just like a epoxy mess to me. Stu might beg to differ, but it's a mess to me, and I, don't, I didn't want to have to freaking deal with it. Stu's like, it's easy, just take a torch and clean it up, and then get a wire brush and then take it off. Okay, well, Stu, why didn't you do it, Stu? So anyways, um, I don't know. Maybe I'll make a wicked sp wood spirit out of this one today. Because you can see here, it's got like cool kind of natural hair going up here but I hope I don't burn away the detail when I'm burning this is really old wood guys I'd say this piece is probably just this piece alone is a couple couple maybe a hundred years old or a couple hundred years old this piece because first of all like I said this thing was like five feet across one piece so you don't get trees like that anymore for the last hundred years look at this it looks like somebody's kind of kind of looks like an arms up there and an arms down there but anyways, I'm going to take a torch and clean it up. So you guys, when you do this, clean this epoxy shit up. Wear your friggin' masks, man. Okay, so I'm going to be wearing my mask. I'm not going to film cleaning this up. But I'm going to burn the hell out of it, let it all drip off, and get her done. Okay, guys, so it actually took quite a while to uh, clean this stuff up. And it's still not that clean, so it definitely wasn't that easy. So, um... This piece, you can see I got a wood spirit carved in there. I uh, drew in there. So I'm just going to, uh, I guess, start cutting the wood spirit in. What else can you do? Okay, so. Um, let me get the, where's the blower thing here? Okay, so when I was carving this, see all that uh, pitch in there? Or it's that uh, epoxy stuff, I don't know. But you can see it, I carved right through because it wasn't nearly as deep as the back, right? So there's a hole in there. So then I carved this to equal it, negative space, guys. Okay, so I, I realize this chin sloping down that way. I really don't care at this point. So what I'm trying to think of is if do I like these two holes like this or do I want to carve this right out and then take this back a bit here do you know what I mean I don't think I like the way there's a hole here and a hole there and that looks I'm gonna cut this out take this back a bit okay that's what I'm gonna do yep Okay, you can see here I got all the negative spaces cut out to where I want them, right? I kind of left this in here. Talk like, I don't know, it's like a crystal or something hanging, just a spike hanging down in his eye. Um, so what I'm going to do now with this stuff to lighten it up for when I, I don't, I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm going to uh, seat all this or what it's going to be. But I want to lighten this up for when I put the coat on it, right? All this, these points here, I want to make this real flat and really smooth 
like that means lots of sanding. I still got to carve the beard hairs in here. Take his chin down a bit. And uh, he's got a small chin. <laughs> I could carve it deeper. Good enough for me though. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is clean up all the outside edge now with this Bampa tool, guys. Okay, goes on a regular. This is a boss. It's just a cheap grinder. And we've got one of these discs on here, okay? So I'm going to run around and clean all that up with that. Okay guys, look at the color difference in the ground. So all the light stuff is western, new, not old growth western red cedar, but that's, the light stuff's western red cedar, and the dark stuff is uh, the prehistoric redwood tree. Okay, so this is what I got so far. I ended up cleaning up all that stuff off there. I had to grind the whole thing, man. You know, like there's, that just the white stuff kept popping out like look at here that little white stuff the epoxy and in here oh boy this is a project Stu I know what you guys this is aimed for my buddy Stu that gave me this piece of wood and I know he's gonna watch this video Stu this is one of those projects where you call it well it's no insult I'm honored to be able to carve this piece of wood and thank you very much and I got more pieces to carve and once again I can't thank you enough for gifting it to me but this is what project that you call. And guys, sorry for the language. Jordy, what the fuck are you doing, Jordy? What the fuck are you doing? Okay, guys, so I'm almost wrapped up here for the day today. Um, I started a sanding it here with my little orbit sander here. This hook and loop Velcro, I gotta put a sand disc on there. So I'm gonna take this down to 150 grit and then uh, just this flat part here. And then I'm going to hit it with water to see how dark it goes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to oil this piece because if I oil this piece, that means I got to get all this stuff out of here too. It does not burn out of there. I don't care. I had a wire brush. I burned it and I spent hours on it and it didn't work. Okay. But this is going to be a real nice piece of wood when it's done. But you can even look. Look. See? That's all epoxy. Poured way deep into little tiny cracks. How many gallons of epoxy did you use when you did this stew? <laughs> okay, so I took it, this is 150, I did started 80, I did 150, and uh, this thing's a piece of junk, this thing kept on falling off, I gotta buy a better one. But um, I took it down to 220, okay? Whatever, friggin', okay, it's 220. So, I'm gonna shoot myself later because I just did the easy spots first, parts first, just to see what, uh, it's going to look like. So look at that color, guys. I want to take this down to like 500 grit. If this piece turns out, I'm going to be entering it into a art uh, art show thing for uh, Canada. Maybe. We'll see. So uh, let's see here. Okay. So I don't know. Man, oh man. If I want to dig this stuff out with my Dremel. Because I'm going to burn all back here, guys. Okay, so I want all like inside to be dark when I'm done it and in here is going to be dark But I don't know if I need to dig all this stuff out with my Dremel because well I just don't know like look I'll probably have to carve this whole piece off. I did carve this in myself this lip Because see I kept on going deeper and deeper with the epoxy in there. So whatever Okay so let's do a water test. You guys, I'm no sanding expert, 
But when you guys have a real special piece of wood, I got three more pieces of this wood left, okay? Let's see, let's take a look here. So, in a, this is how that piece of wood started. See it right there? Hold on. This is how this piece of wood started. I still gotta take the Lady of the Wood Spirit. And this is how it is now. So let's try the water test. Let's try over here. So let's try up here first, okay? So it's not sanded at all, really. There's your water test there. Okay, it's not that, nothing nothing big deal about it. But after you sand it, and guys, it's only been taken down to 220 grit. Watch this. Look at that beautiful color in there. Now let's look at this. Now look at that beautiful color. This is going to, I think I'm going to have to clean all the rest of this crap out of in here. And I think it's going to have to be oiled, I think. I think all the woodworking pros out there would agree with me. Because the more the more I sand it, like I said guys, I'm no pro, but the more I sand it with finer grit, the more of a shine the oil is going to give. I'll be back tomorrow and do more sanding. Okay, so it's now the next day and I'm back for more pain of sanding and I'm going to try and finish this guy off. So, for this part, I'm going to burn in here, okay? But I thought maybe I can use some black paint, some uh, flat black paint, so I don't have to carve all this out because I don't want to carve right through. Um, here, I brought this specialty Peter Blair man, little uh, Dremel mandrels for the 1 8. I'm going to get in there with that. Here, I am going to carve this out with my uh, cuts all bit. Cut, try and cut all this crap out of here on my uh, Dremel tool. And yeah, just sanding, sanding, sanding. The epoxies, the epoxy in here has been the, the real bitch for this uh, carving. But I want to sand this the best that I can sand. I'm not sure yet if I want to give this guy, you can see there's a couple wormholes here, wormhole here, wormhole here. Oh, I can get, carve that one deeper and get rid of that, I think. I'm not too sure about that one. But uh, yeah, I got a lot of sanding to do, so I won't waste your time showing you guys. I'll just show you a little clips, I guess. For all uh, in here that needs to be sanded, I'm going to be starting off with the drill with this uh, 1 8 mandrel Pete Blair makes. He sells these guys. They're 22 bucks with shipping included. Um, if you want to know how to get these, just leave a comment and I'll send you Pete's email. Just goes on a drill. It's got a nut there with washers and this thing works wicked and it keeps you less dirty. It keeps you away from the sanding, right? I got this cut saw bit. I might use on my die grinder, you guys. If you want to get the cut saws, just go to the description below. You, it'll take you to the cut saw site. Use the code C Fusion. You'll save yourself five percent. Okay, yep, yeah, let's do it. Okay, who remembers that door song, song breaking through to the other side? Well, I carved so, had to carve so deep in here to try and get most of that white stuff out, that epoxy out. I almost broke on through to the other side, but I didn't. So I got this burr on here, guys. This is like a little metalworking burr. I show them on my videos. It's for finer um, tuning things. Okay. You guys can get these on Amazon for like 10 bucks a set for a set of like a set of 10 for like 10 bucks. So they're good burrs to have. Look at the little cuts all in there. So I'm going to clean up inside there with that burr. Okay. Okay, so I got some of the uh, cleaning up done a bit, okay. Um, so I kind of carved them a sleeping eye. So here's a Pete Blair mandrel, here's the one that fits in your Dremel, 1 8th. Like I said guys, if you want to get one of these, I'll, I'll just leave his email in the description below. I'm going to put this on my flex shaft, 
and try and sand inside these tight areas. I'll be burning in here. Uh, and like, okay, well, whatever. I'm just going to start sanding. Okay, I got all the top in here pretty well sanded as good as I want for now. Now I'm going to burn in here. I might burn, sand, burn, sand. I'm going to burn in here. I'm going to burn around all these edges. I'll burn and sand, burned and sand. Why I'm burning is because I want these uh, crevices to look deeper, right? It'll just give it a better effect. So I got to burn all up under here. I still gotta sand everywhere, all his face and all around and just everywhere. Yep. Okay, burn. Burn, sand, repeat, burn, sand, repeat, yep. Okay, so I've been here for about uh, five and a half hours. I've taken it down to 320 grit. Um, all the flat spots, like here, 320. This is all 320, 320 up here. And 320 here. I left the face kind of rough, gave him kind of a sleeping eye. So I talked to my buddy Stu that gave me this original piece of wood, and um, you know he suggested an epoxy pour. I think an epoxy pour would be a good idea for this piece. Make it nice and shiny like the original table, right? And the epoxy pour really brings out the true colors. So I think I'm going to probably end up going with that. But I've done an epoxy pour uh, table with my uh, buddy Pete, and it was cedar, and the, the the cedar kept on bubbling. The gases out of the cedar kept on bubbling into the epoxy, and you have to keep sitting there with your torch and melt the bubbles and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do with this one, I've decided this is it, and I hope it's a good call. I'm going to use this pre-catalyzed sanding sealer, okay? It's Mohawk stuff. Um, so this should lock the wood okay I don't know I don't know what I should do maybe I should just wait this thing's been so much work okay guys I forgot so guys I forgot Stu also suggested another thing that makes perfectly good sense so I got some extra pieces of this wood here look at the green in that that's like bird's eye kind of I know some more of it that I got at uh, home will have this stuff and this green in here okay so I got four pieces okay so I also I sounded basically sit look at bird's eye I, I think that's bird's eye I basically sat them down to 320 grit same as this guy okay so one's gonna be Mod Podge one's gonna be spar varnish one's gonna be epoxy one's gonna be um, sanding sealer then epoxied okay so this is gonna have to be a two-part series I'm gonna go home and do this and we'll see we'll, we'll check it out but first of all let me cat set the camera up in the tripod here and let's do a water test <laughs> okay let's suck with some water We got some uh, quilting going on here. I think uh, you know oiling oiling this thing would be really cool, but then it just takes so much maintenance to uh, maintenance to um, 
you know dust it and stuff like that so I won't be oiling it and when you oil it it goes really dark let's let this water uh, kind of soak into the wood for a bit and then it will really uh, darken up but yeah you can see the quilting going on here I've got a bit of it up here okay so look how dark it's already going from that water going in there this isn't going to be a cheap piece I tell you that much right now so I'm going to go home put the stuff on these pieces and we'll see what's happening but I'll be back and I'm going to clean up a bit around here oh boy oh boy any darker anyways I'm gonna go home do the test now okay so here I am back at home now so I've already sprayed this one with the sanding sealer and I got sanding sealer and it's gonna be epoxy over top of the sanding sealer then this one is um, gonna be just epoxy I got it marked there epoxy this one's gonna be the Mod Podge and this one's gonna be the spar varnish okay so here's the Hellsman spar. I don't know. Here's some epoxy. Here's the Mod Podge. Let's let the games begin. Okay, you guys can see this is water blade based. It's uh, gloss. Okay, so let's start with the Mod Podge, and we'll put it on pretty thick too. I like the way the uh, when it dry, this is like a glue, guys. I know I know you can make your own formula of this stuff, but I maybe will in the future, but not right now. So I like the way this stuff looks because you see the cool lines. This gives a unique old school kind of look. Okay. So I got these toothpicks here. I'm gonna put it this way. Let it dry over here. Okay, I got the spar all mixed up. <sighs> I gotta start breathing better. I don't breathe good enough. I hope this is a spar piece, yeah. Okay, so we'll let this, uh, it's done, it's barred. Okay guys, so we got our epoxy all mixed up here. It's one to one, right? So make sure you mix your epoxy and just do, let's do a little uh, pour, actually. Hold on a sec. Okay, I just kind of had to level it off a bit. No big deal, whatever, right? So let's do our epoxy pour on this. This one's the one with the um, sanding sealer on it. I think this stuff will probably take 24 hours to cure. Got a little foam brush here. Stu said, he, my buddy Stu said, because he does like, uh, he's a rock hound guy. So he said, he's, Jesus Christ. He said, uh, pardon my language to those people that are churchgoers. He, um, he's poured lots of clocks back in the day. Epoxy pour. He said he'd give me a hand doing this. If it, if this is the final conclusion. Well, look at the bird's eye in here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is leave this now, let it sit overnight, let it cure, and um, see what happens. Okay, there's epoxy, epoxy, spar, and mod podge. See I'm all doing there, guys. Okay, so here we go. Um, so we'll start off with the mod podge. So here's the mod podge color, okay? Guys, I wasn't perfect on doing this stuff. I just did it quickly just to see the color, right? Like you can see, 
you can see the paint that's what i like about the mod spots for different types of carvings you can see the paint strokes on there but i don't think the mod podge is going to work for this okay let's be clear about that then we'll look at the uh spire varnish so here's the spire varnish see if you can, guys can get some uh look how metallic that wood looks eh so that's the spar but you can still see it's not that smooth off the light reflection there and this is only one coat guys I could do another coat and make it a I could almost do like a spar pour but I don't know about this and you can see it's not sanded too good there but yeah look how that uh this wood looks so metallic, right? Look at it. It looks way more metallic off screen too. So that's that. Okay, so here's the epoxy pour with the sanding sealer on it. I did do some mistakes, guys. Like I was, I heated up the, the stuff too much. As Pete would know, I did before he saw me do it. But uh, it didn't cure that good. Because that's just me. See that like spot there? That's me messing around with it. I heated it up too much, then I had to mix it all up so it didn't look burnt. So you really have to watch when you do this stuff, guys. It's quick passes with your torch, like whoosh, just to pop all the bubbles. And this does have bubbles in it. Okay, so you can see the one there in the light. So that's that. This is the epoxy pour with the freaking, oh God, the, the sanding sealer underneath of it. Okay. And last but not the least, here's epoxy pour. This epoxy still isn't 100% cured, guys. So I have to be careful. See, it's still sticky. Here's the epoxy pour without this the um, sanding sealer. There's some bubbles in it, like if you can see in the light here. See those bubbles by the light? So I wasn't, I, I didn't really care too much about the bubbles. I wasn't keeping on guard because I just wanted to see the color. Oh, it made the color come out. Look at look at the metallics in there, guys. You know, I'm... Man. That's just crazy. So, my, my final decision is to pour it without any sanding seal or anything and just be on guard with a torch from... Uh, with the pop bubbles. So, I'll be doing that in the next video, guys, because it will be too long of a video. So, wish me luck on the next part of the carving and uh, let me know what you all think of this carving and uh, I don't know it's gonna be neat Stu's gonna help me he's done lots of clocks like the old school clocks like this with the epoxy pour so he's actually I ordered some uh, epoxy from Bear Woods I talked to the owner at Bear uh, I think it's Bear Woods carving um, he gave me a discount on the epoxy and he's gonna give me a discount for you guys if you guys want to order epoxy it is a Canadian company but they ship worldwide or see look at that shine if you if you minus the bubbles so we'll do the uh, epoxy pour when the epoxy gets here maybe I should try and do a nice little curving on this one or something it's just such a nice piece of wood I just love it look at it I got lots of this stuff too boy whoo yeah okay so spar uh, no sorry um, Mod Podge spar with the sealer, without the sealer. This is the winner here. Okay, stay tuned for the next video, guys. Love to, if you guys like this video, please give it a like. And uh, if you like the channel, give it a subscribe for lots of wood carving videos, power carving, and uh, leave a comment. See you later. Okay, bye.